Okay, today I want to show you the Photos app. This is one of our favorite apps on our phones because we get to see all the photos of our family and any pictures that we've taken. So to start off, I want to show you that uh, you've got four different tabs along the bottom of your phone. So you've got the library, you've got For You, you've got Albums, and you've got Search. So we'll take a look at each of those. Right above those four tabs, you've got different time frames. So I'm looking at days right now, and these are just a few days of photos, but I could go into months and kind of get an overview of months. I can also go into years, and then I'm looking at uh, scrolling through different years of photos. Okay, so now sometimes you want to find a photo and you you can kind of remember like, okay, when did I take that photo? Okay, I think that photo was taken in 2017. So if you go to the years area and then you tap on the year 2017, now I'm looking at the different months of photos, right? And let's see, uh, maybe it's, yeah, this this. Hickam Beach photos, that, that looks like uh, the one I want. So I can tap into that and it'll take me into the day of that photo. And then I can see all the different photos that I've taken. You also have a, another option here that says all photos. And the main difference between days and all photos is that all photos will show you absolutely every photo, but days will kind of uh, cut, not combined, but it will only show you like one photo if if you take three or four photos and they basically look the same, it will kind of only show you one of those, okay? So, but days is a really good summary of the different photos that you have. Okay, so I suggest you play around with the Photos app and um, maybe try this days view because I, I find the days view to be one of the most useful views of all the photos that we have here. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the For You tab. So it's the second tab along the bottom of your phone, if you could just tap that. And you can see different sections. So at the top here, I have memories. So memories is an automatically generated video um, and photo album of different time periods. Like I've got Thanksgiving 2019. So if I tap on this, at the very top, I've got a video of Thanksgiving 2019. And then below that, I've got a bunch of different photos that were taken on that Thanksgiving. And then below that, the people who were in there and the places where I've taken those photos. I've also got related memories, okay? So memories is an automatically generated uh, video of some of your photos. And uh, this probably isn't downloaded to my phone, but if I wanted to view this video, I could just tap that play button and it would play this video for me. Okay, go ahead and try that. See if you've got a memory and tap the play button. Okay, I'm gonna come out here. I'm still in the For You tab and I'm gonna scroll down and I've got some featured photos that I might've taken. Okay, scrolling through some of these memories, right? If I scroll a little further, I've got you may have shared albums. So if you've shared an album with somebody or if they've shared one with you, the shared albums would appear here. And we may uh, take a look at that uh, coming up in a little bit, okay? But the For You section and especially the memories at the top are really neat, uh, really neat things to look at. You can see some of my uh, memories here my four-legged friends. And those are all the animals that have been in my life. Uh, I've got some different uh, different trips that we've been on. I've got some with food. 
photos, so that's kind of fun, huh? And then for some of these, it's just like a lot happened on a particular day, and so you got all the photos from that day. Okay, but this is a really fun feature, so if you don't do anything else with your photos, come here to mem the For You section and the Memories and play with these because these are really fun. You have a, you have a lot of fun with these. And you don't have to do anything, really. These are automatically generated for you. And um, over time, more and more of these videos will be generated, and you can just sit back and enjoy them. Okay, now we all want to organize our photos. So we'll take a look at albums next. <clears throat> and you can see that I've got a whole bunch of different albums. I could scroll. Uh, to the left or to the right to kind of see all the different albums. It's very easy to create an album. So if you've never created an album of photos, uh, in the top left corner is that plus button. And so we can just tap on that plus button. And we want to create a new album. Okay. Or you might want to create a new shared album. The difference there is that if you share an album, it'll create the album, and then you'll be able to invite people to view the photos in that album. Uh, usually you can invite them via email or text message. Okay, and you may just want to create a new folder to put multiple albums into a folder. Okay, but the one I wanna choose right now is new album. So I'm gonna tap on that one. It's going to ask me for a name, so I will type in just a name here, and I'm going to tap Save. Okay, and now it prompts me to add photos into this album. So I can scroll through this list of photos that I've got here, and let's see. Uh, here's uh, here's Matthew with his excavator out there oops I kind of dragged on a couple of photos uh let's see what else do i want to add here uh matthew posing it's, of course i got a lot of photos of my son okay and once i've selected all the albums or i'm sorry all the photos i want to put in the album i can tap the done button in the top right okay and you can see that i've just created this album and if i if I tap on that album, it'll have all the photos there. If I want to add to this album, I just tap that plus button. And then I can come in here and add like another photo. Here's Matthew eating a cupcake. Okay, so it's real easy to create an album like this. Um, and just to give you some ideas of uh, different albums you might want to create, Let's see, um, I have a bunch of social media accounts and I like to use the same profile picture. So like my Facebook account, there's there certain photos that I like to use for my profile. And so I've saved a few of these photos here in a profile album. That's an idea you might want to steal from me. Let's see. Got some different event albums. Uh, here's one that I just created recently, and this is an ID album. So in this album, you could see that I've got my my school ID, my driver's license, the front and the back. I've got uh, my other uh, government ID, as well as my eyeglass prescription. Okay, so you can see how blind I am. <clears throat> but I created this ID album just to store some photos of ID, just in case I need the information. So um, as, as I'm kind of gonna go through this, uh, I'm gonna add a picture of my passport into this album. I could even add like, uh, photos of my credit cards. Um, I used to, I used to take a picture of all the credit cards in my wallet, just in case I lost my wallet and I needed to 
have the, the credit card numbers and the contact information for each credit card. So that's something else I may want to keep in my in, in, in a photo album like this. Maybe that inf information is too sensitive and you don't want to keep it in your photo album. But um, I find that some of these IDs are very useful to store in its own album so you can always find it. Okay, so you may have other good ideas for albums. These are just a few that I've come up with besides your typical event album or your family album or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to scroll back here and let's now create a shared album. So I'm going to tap the albums arrow in the top left corner and this time I'm going to click the plus button and I want to create a new shared album. Okay. And so the first thing it asks me to do now is it just talk, uh, you know, to name the album. What, what do I want to call this shared album? And you can see that the album is stored in iCloud. So um, I'm going to call this album training. So, so I know that this is the album I use for, for these training classes. And then I'll tap next. Okay, and now it wants me to share the album with somebody. So I am going to tap Joan. And here's Joan. And so this will send Joan a text message with this album so I can share it with her. And I'm going to tap the Create button. I could also tap the plus to add other people to this album, but I will just tap the Create button. OK, so now you can see at the top here, I've got a training album uh, with Joan. And it's, it's empty right now, so I'm going to have to tap on that. Oops. <clears throat> OK, something, something happened. I guess I can't invite Joan to this album, so uh, I'll just close that. But I'll keep showing you the shared album. So let me just tap on that album. Just like the other albums that you saw, I tap on this plus button. I can choose photos to put into this album. And let me add, uh, let me just add a couple of these pictures. Okay, so whenever you're adding photos into this shared album, it's almost like a little post on Instagram or something. It, it will al allow you to write a little description of these photos. So I'll just say uh, random photos and I'll tap post. And now these photos will be posted in this album. OK, one of the main differences with shared albums is that I have this little uh, person icon at the top. And if I tap on that person icon, I can add other people to this album. OK, so here is this plus invite people. I can add some people in here. There, there's an option here to let me um, allow subscribers to post photos. So if I shared this album with you and you wanted to put some photos into the album, you could do that because I've got that turned on. You can also, for some people who don't have uh, like iPhones, you can turn on this public website option and then these photos would go to uh, a link on the internet. And you can just share that link and other people without iPhones can just view the photos. They could actually download uh, the photos as well. So you have to be careful who you send those links to. Okay. And notifications. So if, if somebody does add a photo to this album, you will be notified of that. Okay. So here are some settings for your shared albums. I'm going to just click done. And that's pretty much everything with shared albums. The next thing I want to show you, of course, is the search button in the bottom right corner. So if you tap on that, now I can search for things. So I might want to search for moments. I might want to search for people. 
I might want to search by place, different categories of, okay, and uh, all these things. But the main thing you probably want to do is search for something. Um, so you're going to tap up here, right below the word search is a, a text bubble. So if I tap in that, the keyboard comes up and I can type whatever I want to search for. So like if I want to search for cats. Okay, so I type up cat and 54 of my photos have brought up a cat. So I've, uh, you know, found, I, I've played with a lot of cats over my, my years here. So here are my 54 photos with cats. I can tap on this little uh, word that says see all and then I can see all the different cats that I've had. Some of these are my cats and some are my, my friends. Some are just random cats that I've taken pictures of over the years. Okay, so it would be uh, you know really easy to search for different things. So you could search for an item or like a cat, a dog, something like that. You can search for a place. So uh, I could search for Portland and uh, you know, 37 photos come up that have been uh, tagged with the location Portland. Okay, you can search for different people too. You could also get the get to the people from this uh, sliding list here, but I might be able to search for uh, my friend James. So James is my best friend. He's in like a hundred of these photos. Okay, so uh, search is a nice function to to find photos that uh, you're you want to look for. Okay, the last thing I want to show you, and this is uh, maybe more of an advanced feature, is editing photos. So let me go back to the library, and let me find a photo to edit. Let's see, let's see. Uh, we'll just pick any photo. So maybe this this photo of Matthew on the tree stump. Okay, so, um, per, you know, maybe this photo wasn't, um, you know, as good as I wanted it to be. So in the top right corner, you see the edit button. So if I tap on that edit button, uh, this photo is a little bit old, so it's going to download. And once it's downloaded, now I've got some different tools and different things to adjust. So the way that I like to work um, is from the bottom right corner. So uh, besides the Done button, the next item to the left of that is the Crop tool. So the first thing I want to do is to crop or to straighten things. And um, you can see that I've got uh, a lot of different options here, but along right above the crop tool is that, that uh, I don't know, a bunch of lines, a bunch of vertical lines. And what you can do is you can drag along this line to kind of straighten the photo. So if I thought maybe this was a little bit straighter, uh, Matthew's eyes are kind of straight now. Um, that looks that looks okay, and you can see that I can also right on the photo I can drag the corners, or really drag anywhere in the photo to crop in. So, if maybe <coughs> excuse me, if that's a good place to crop the photo, just let it go and it'll kind of crop to that place. And okay, that that photo looks good now. So I can just tap. Uh, done if that's all I want to do with it. But if I want to work more with this, I, I'm going to use the other tools here. So right next to the crop tool are filters. So let me tap on that. We're on the bottom row there. And if you're into these filters, you know, you can kind of change the look of the photo. I personally don't like to use any filters because uh, I'm that guy. I just like to take the pictures normally and 
have the original. But if you want to make something special, you can use a filter. Okay, the next button over are like brightness and contrast and those kind of adjustments, okay? So um, once I've, I'm trying to adjust the photo, the first option is called auto. So if I just tap on that magic wand, it will automatically maybe do some things to the photo, okay? So I thought the photo was good before I tapped that button, but wow, after I tapped that button, it got brighter and the skin tones came out. Wow, I actually like this photo even more now, okay? And I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was tap on that magic wand and voila. Okay, but if I did want to make manual adjustments, I can drag, I can drag these tools over and you see all the different things that that magic wand button did? Pretty amazing. Okay, so I've got, you know, all of these settings in your photo that you can adjust. Things like the exposure, the brilliance, and again, when you tap on one of these uh, controls, you get all those vertical lines, and that's how you control how much of an effect you put on here. Okay, and you could do that with all of these different things. Brightness, okay, you can choose brightness and kind of make it darker or brighter. Or... Okay, so you could really go nuts with the editing here, um, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it there because I think that's good. The next button over, I think, is like the live effect. So if you've taken a live photo, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like an animated photo sl photo slash video. So if I hold down on the photo, hi, it's got a little video component. That's that's a live photo. Hi. Okay, and what you can do here is just kind of choose the the frame in this photo that um, looks the best to you. So let me try and get a good smile out of this one, okay? And I can make that the key photo. Okay, well, this has been fun kind of editing this photo, so I'm gonna just tap Done. And tapping that will save all of those changes. Now, if you're into photo editing, I should tell you that that was non-destructive, so now, if I were to tap on the edit button, I can press the revert button in the bottom right corner and it will revert to the original. So um, all of those changes I made and I saved it and I went away, I can come back later and I can remove all of those changes just by reverting back. So those are non-destructive edits. Okay, even the cropping was non-destructive. There's a whole lot more tools here, but this will give you a good introduction to uh, the Photos app and editing your photos.